Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. We do a lot of videos showing you how to do modifications to your classic Mustang that'll make that car a lot more fun to drive. Some examples are a five-speed transmission, modern suspension, better engines, and even better seating surfaces. Right now in Pennsylvania, it's over 100 degrees. And while this classic Mustang is a lot of fun to drive with the top down, adding the air conditioning system would definitely take it to the next level. So today we're going to show you how to install Classic Auto as Perfect Fit Elite Air Conditioning System using the 66 Mustang Convertible. The Classic AutoWare Perfect Fit Elite System is the perfect choice if you're looking to add modern climate control to your first generation Mustang and want to keep an original feel but not necessarily want to present vintage original look. The heart of the system is going to be this complete box here which is going to handle your heating and your air conditioning controls. Classic AutoWare gives you everything you need to convert your classic Mustang into a modern climate control system. This complete assembly is going to mount in place of your factory heater box on your 65 through 66 Mustang and add everything necessary for heat and air conditioning control. While it looks and is going to fit like an original box, it's all modern electronics and has an electronic control that will work with your factory controls on your dash. Keeps the original look but gives you modern climate control. The system will use an original style looking sand and compressor which is going to work off of 134A which is modern AC you're going to want to use in this car. Gives you everything necessary to install it, all the brackets are included, even the correct style crank pulley that will work with an AC system. The condenser, all lines and again everything needed to convert your car over is included with the exception of refrigerant. These are the vents included in the Perfect Fit Elite system. They're going to be a more of a generic style vent. They don't look like the original vents under the dash, but they're going to be a lot cleaner looking and do a much better job of dispersing air among the interior. Classic AutoWare builds the Perfect Fit Elite air conditioning system specifically for your vehicle, so there's a bunch of questions you're going to have to answer before you actually can order this system. You want to know what year the car is, what year the engine is, how many crank bolts you have, how many grooves you have on your crank pulley, what the size of your water pump is, and if the car was or was not a factory AC car. All these things you'll want to answer and know that before you order this system. Now follow along and we'll show you how to install it. We're not going to do our typical tools for this installation video because to be honest, you need a lot of tools for this install. The good news is they're all basic hand tools that any competent weekend mechanic should already have in their box at home. The only specialty tool you're going to need for the installation is going to be an inch and 3 8 drill bit. To start the installation, you have to remove the original heater box. We're going to start off in the interior by taking off the glove box door and the glove box to give us more room, then move the engine bay and disconnect some pieces in there. Now we're going to move on to the heater control cables. In the case of ours, there's three of them. The one here on the defrost is already broken off the box, so we need to remove. Remove this, and there's two more inside where the glove box was. The other two are located here and then further back. While we're here, disconnect the harnesses for the resistor switch. We pop them off. And now we can move to the engine bay. First thing we're going to do under the hood is disconnect the wires going to our heater motor. If you don't have quick connects on them, just simply cut them. Then remove these four nuts that hold us to the firewall.
Before we cut the heater hoses off, we're gonna drain all of the coolant from the radiator. The coolant drain, now you can cut both heater hoses about an inch out from the firewall. Now we're going to move the rest of the mounting hardware and remove our heater box. With the heater box out of the car, now we're going to move the control plate. First, remove the grass tray. Give you a little more room to get up in there. It's going to be two nuts and two retaining clips that hold this in place. And to get the top bolt out, we're going to move the retaining Basically, the retainer here for the ashtray itself. Just give us more room to get up in there. It's kind of a tight space. For the original assembly on the table, we can remove the parts we're not going to need. The cables can go away, as well as the blower switch itself. The switch itself, just remove a small little Allen here. Get the knob off the front. And remove this bolt here. Now we can start assembling our new control unit. We'll grab the original piece here, the screw we just removed, grab the bracket that's included, and put that into place. Don't tighten it all the way. Make sure you have a little bit of movement to adjust. Now we'll take one of the supplied screws and from the inside out, put a second piece of hardware on this new bracket. And then we can tighten both down. Slide the blower switch into place. Install it to the bracket with the supplied hardware. Now we're gonna hook up the classic AutoAir Easy Integrators to our original controls to make it work with our new style system. We've got two versions. One says mode and one says temperature control. On the back of the factory controls, Mode's going to go on the top one here, the first controller. Temp is going to go on the third one. The middle one does not get used. What we'll do is start by putting the tip of it through here. And we're going to fold it back and line it up with this. We'll grab one of the supplied clips. Over this edge here. Line it up and reinstall the original hardware. Next, we're going to install the block off plate for the fresh air vent in our cowl. What we're going to do is basically put it up into place and use the three screws provided, screw up into it to hold it in.
And then while you're here, grab a supply J clip, put it over this factory mounting bracket. That'll hold the box in later. Just about ready to install our new heat and air conditioning box into our 66 Mustang. Before you do so, though, is a very important step. The entire system has to be calibrated before you install it. So what you want to do is get a 12 volt source and everything can be done on the bench. You want to grab the three orange, blue and yellow color coded wiring harnesses. Two of them will go on the box here, again, color coded yellow and blue. The third orange will go on the water valve. Then plug them into the corresponding ports on our control. And everything is color coded, making it nice and easy. Now you want to grab the main wiring harness. The small plug here is going to go to the control box to power. The middle one's going to go to our motor itself. And this one here is going to go to the fan switch. The two blue leads are going to go to our thermostat right here next to the motor. Connect the red to power and everything else to ground. I'll install the calibration key in the controller. And then connect power. Make sure you have everything plugged in the correct corresponding color. Now we're ready to calibrate. All right, you want to start with the mode all the way down, temperature control all the way up, and the fan on off. Then we're going to move to high. Calibration key is lighting up as it should. As you can hear, obviously the motor is working. Now move the mode up, one motion. Again, check the calibration key, make sure it lights up. Next, we're going to move the temp knob all the way down. Calibration key lit up again, so we're good. Now move the fan switch to off, and then we're going to remove the calibration key. Now we'll test everything. We'll turn the fan back on. We have this on dash vents. So should be coming out of here. Nothing out of there. We're good there. Move it to defrost. Now it's coming out of the defrost vents, which is correct. Floor. Now it's coming out of the floor vents. Everything's good. Now we'll check the temperature. Basically, on hot, you should be able to see through the water valve. When I move to cold, it should close up. Can you see through it? Close up. Okay, and we're good. Now we're gonna take the template from the back of the instructions, line up the hole with the factory heater motor hole. Make sure it's even with the floor pan and marker holes, we have to punch out. Now I'll start by drilling a pilot hole. I'm gonna open it up to 5 8 There is a brake line on the other side of this. Make sure it's clear before you drill. Now we're ready to put the box into place. You won't need help for this part. You wanna have somebody in the engine bay that can put a bolt on to hold it in place once you get it in there. So what we're going to do is lay it flat down here, kind of roll it up in. Now on the inside, we connect the motor to the J clip we installed earlier. 
Once you get the vertical screw in place, you can move on to the auxiliary bracket. This bracket's gonna connect the box to the cowl area itself. You will have to drill into the cowl area. The box is pre-drilled. The box mounted, now we can install the controller. You want to fish all the wires through first and then be very careful with these two pieces when you put it in that you don't damage them. You need to reinstall the factory hardware to hold it in place. With everything in place, we can start the wiring now. We're going to take the orange harness, which comes up to the engine bay. We're going to fish it through one of the original openings for the heater hoses. And the other end hanging out here for the water valve, which will connect later. Now move back under the dash, plug everything back in. Now what you want to do is find a good spot to mount the relay, the control box, and then all your grounds, and then finally find a 12 volt power source. Or connect everything to our controller. Basically, you can mount the controller wherever you can easily put it that everything will reach. Classic auto it does provide screws where everything seems to fit with our car. The double stick cable work perfectly. Now we're going to install the firewall block off plate. What you want to do is make some small like X cuts in each of these openings here so the pipes can fit through without damaging them. and then screw it into the firewall. Next, we're gonna install grommets on the firewall where the factory heater hose openings went into our interior. Make sure you cut a hole in one for the wiring harness for the water valve. I'll install the drain tube through the hole we drilled earlier onto the diffractory drain on the air conditioning. Now we're going to move on to the heater hose fittings. The lower connection on the heater hose here is going to go to the original hose that goes up to the intake. Now we'll take the other factory hose, go approximately six inches down. Cut the hose. On the water valve, it's very important you make the correct connections or your AC system's not going to work. This side, very carefully labeled, goes to the water pump. The other side, it's going to go into our box.
Now we're going to move on to running the interior duct work. We're going to start by doing the defroster. You actually can get it from under the dash, but we're going to pop the grill to make it a little bit easier, plus make it easier for you to see. With the clips included, the defroster ducts from Classic Auto Air will work with your original defroster ducts. The problem is, these are paper and over time they tend to get dried out. So if you're doing this installation, I suggest picking up a set of new ducts from Scott Drake. The ducts already have clips on them. Simply line them up, slide them in, lock them into place. And we're ready to install back in our car. I'll put our new ducts into place. Now we can move on to mounting the actual AC ducts themselves. These are gonna go underneath your dashboard. You can pretty much put them wherever you want. There's no specific place, but you wanna put kind of two on the outside area, then another two in the center, give you more even dispersion of cold air. Installing the tubes between the vents and the ducts can be very hard to see and can be very frustrating under the car. The trick to it, you follow the edge, there's a metal ring in here. You want to put that edge up first and then sort of work it around, pulling it up onto the vent. That's going to be the easiest way to get it onto the vents and on the ductwork. So just work your way around and follow the ring and it'll work its way on. Now once you get them seated, wrap the zip tie around and keep it in place. You want to repeat the process then with the other three vents. Once the ducts and vents are connected, you're pretty much finished with the interior. You don't want to install the glove box provided by Classic Auto Air. The factory one is going to be too deep and won't clear the vents. Once it's installed, pretty much put your interior back together, hide the wires as best as possible, and move under the hood. Our first step under the hood is going to, be to mount our new condenser. The condenser is going to mount where the factory one would, which is right in this area here. So to get there, we're going to start by removing the support, the grill, and the horn.
with everything out of the way for the condenser. Before we actually mount that, now we're gonna move inside the engine bay. We're gonna remove our fan, our belt, and our factory crank pulley, replace with the correct parts, and then mount our compressor. We're gonna loosen those and loosen up the alternator. Now we're going to install our new crank pulley. Depending on your application, what other options you have in the car, you may want to remove the fan and the shroud to give yourself a little more room to get in here. Now with the crank pulley mounted, we can move on to mounting the actual AC compressor. In our case, this is going to be in the way, so the first thing we're going to do is remove our coil. We're going to put it out of the way, mount the compressor, then we'll find a new place to mount the coil. The front plate's going to mount pretty much right here. So the first thing we're going to do is remove these three water pump bolts. We're going to replace them with new hardware that's going to support our plate. Make sure you have the proper spacers here. Power steering, manual steering, there will be some differences in which ones get used, so make sure you have the correct sizes. With the rear bracket, what you do is put the first bolt on. Before you put the other ones on, you want to put one of the mounting bolts on for the AC compressor. It comes in from the back. Once you have this tight, there's no way to get it out. So you want to put that on first to make your life easier later. Now we can mount the compressor. Compressor mounted, now we're going to mount the eccentric for our idler pulley. Now the idler pulley itself, you're going to put the pulley bushing in the center first, the bolt will go through, the spacer is going to go on the back and thread into the eccentric. Now we're ready to prep the condenser for installation. What we're going to do is install the dryer to it. What you want to do is figure out where the dryer is going to fit 
the dryer tube will go where it's supposed to, and then we're gonna bolt it on from the back side of the condenser. Before we make the connection between the hose and the dryer, you want to put the O-ring on, put a little mineral oil on as well. Same thing down here, some mineral oil on the end here. I'll remove the red fitting at the bottom and we're gonna install the pressure switch. Pressure switch already has an O-ring installed on it, so it's ready to go. Switch installed, we're also going to install the pressure switch harness. Now we're going to install the mounting brackets on the condenser before it goes on the car. What you want to do is mark the 6th, 7th, 11th, and 12th holes from the left that's where the bracket's gonna go. Which the bracket is bent towards you when you install it. The lower is gonna be the sixth, seventh, thirteenth, and fourteenth holes we're gonna use for the bracket. Before we can mount the condenser, we have to drill a couple holes. If you have an original radiator support, this part's going to be a lot easier. There's an indentation here and another one here for the holes we're going to drill because this was designed for AC from the factory. If you have an aftermarket one, you'll just have to measure out these two holes before you drill. Let's start with a pilot hole. Make sure everything's clear behind you. There's no wiring harnesses back there. Once our holes are drilled, you want to grab a file, work your way around the edges, and deburr them since we will have hoses going through these. Now that we've drilled our two holes, we can actually mount the condenser. There's two wires you're going to have to fish inside the car, well, inside the engine bay anyway. These are going to come from the pressure switch to turn the AC on. One's going to go to the compressor itself, the other wire is going to fish the interior and go to the relay we mount underneath the dashboard. The actual condenser itself is going to mount using factory hardware. The two bolts here for the upper latch and one down here for the support. Okay, it lines up just like that. And you can reinstall your latch support. With the condenser mounted, we can start running our lines. We're going to start with the main line to come from the firewall up to our dryer. 
You see us lay that in the engine bay and we're gonna fish it through. Take all the fittings, install a little bit of oil and an O-ring. Now we're going to connect the line from our condenser to our compressor. And make sure you don't forget the O-rings, they're going to be very important for the AC to work properly and not leak. Now make our connection at the compressor. Now we'll connect the other line of the compressor to the firewall. This will be the largest line. I'm going to fish the hose back around the air cleaner. Keep it kind of as low as possible. I'm going to make the connection over at the firewall. Now the last line will go from the compressor over to the firewall again. Once you have all these hoses running connected, I'm going to make sure they're not getting in the way of anything. You don't want to get stuck on your throttle or anything like that. All the lines connected, now we're going to connect the pressure switch. What we do is cut the one, one side of the white wire here. Install the included connector. And plug it in. What we're going to do is take the wire we just cut off we didn't use and the included butt connector and push these together to extend over to the firewall. You should have enough left over. If you don't, just grab some normal wire and extend it that way. Now we'll connect the other end of the pressure switch wire, the white power source. Pop the relay under the dash. Since we grounded everything earlier, the last connection to make underneath the dash is going to be the actual 12 volt power. You want to go up to a 12 volt switch source. What we recommend doing is take the original wire for your blower switch, we extended that down and we use that to connect it. Once you connect this for your 12 volt power, you wanna to go to the fuse box, remove the 14 amp fuse that's installed for the blower switch and replace it with a 20 amp. Back under the hood, you're gonna to wanna to turn the compressor by hand around 15 to 20 revolutions before you put the belt on. And actually once we get it charged, you wanna do the same thing, turn it by hand before you run it and I'll make sure it breaks in properly. We're coming down to the home stretch on the installation. It's time to install the belts on our engine. Our original alternator belt is going to work fine. As far as the AC compressor belt goes, Classic Auto is going to recommend a 51 inch belt. We've actually found that a 49 and a half to 50 inch usually fits a little bit better, but if you're not sure, you can measure before you order the belt because it's not included with the kit. So just put everything on loosely at first, and then we'll tighten it up. You want to loosen up your idler here. That's what's going to be your adjustment for the belt. This is a 49 and a half. And as you can see, it fits fine. Now we'll put some tension on the belt, and tighten everything down.
At this point, you want to reinstall the fan the fan shroud, put your grill and horns back on, refill the radiator with coolant, and your installation is finished. Once you're finished the installation itself, you'll want to take the car to a local reputable shop and have the system charged. Classic Autoware provides detailed instructions on how to charge the system properly using the correct 134A refrigerant. This is a time-consuming install. It is very tedious. There's a lot of working in very small locations, so give yourself the better part of a weekend for the installation, but you'll be back on the road in no time.